somebody else's. And so you're constantly trying to figure out how to navigate other people's priorities. So how you can learn to say no is, well, first of all, give yourself space. We are mm -hmm. it's knee jerk reaction to say absolutely and then figure it out later. Yeah, the even if it means, thing. yeah, because of the super mom thing. Even that if that means you're up until two a.m. baking cookies, right? Yeah, unnecessary. The Making Business Effortless podcast mission is to support successful entrepreneurs by sharing the stories of high performing service based business owners, while sharing tips and helpful resources so you can buy back time and make more wealth in your business and in your life. I am super excited about this topic because I can think it can hit hard for all you moms out there, whether you're an empty nest mom or a mom with a little or a mom with a teenager, you're always a mom. <laughs> so I think this topic is going to be great. My guest, Steph, the boundaries babe is here today and I'm like adamant about boundaries. So she wanted to talk about the super mom theory. So first, a little bit about you, Steph, why are you the boundaries babe? Oh, such a good question. So um, if there's a mom title, I've been it. I had my first um, two at 19. So young mom, I've been a stay at home mom. I've been a single mom. I've been a step mom. So at one point I had five kids in the house, ages one to 17. Oh, um, work from home mom, work out of the home mom, entrepreneur mom, all the things. So um, so I get it, right? And so I was a brand new Starbucks manager um learning kind of the ropes of how starbucks worked i moved up really really fast in that company so within i started and within the first six months i got promoted to assistant manager and then was training to be a manager so i had my first store five kids in the house and i got so tired of whose towels on the floor whose cup is mm -hmm. left in the living room you know all of the stupid little why is the jacket in over here on the table <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Why is the homework <laughs> crumpled up at the bottom of the thing and you mm -hmm. forgot your soccer shoes? Um, so that's, I really learned how to get super, super organized. Um, so also in the five kids, we had, there were under four parenting plans, went to school in two different oh. cities. Like it was, it was a little bit of a crazy time, right? Um, my mom also died during that time period. And so there was just a lot of things going on and I had to, I, I really actually, hit burnout. I ended up in the ER with what I learned oh, later wow. was a migraine. I had never, ever had a migraine. Um, and I ended up in there for, you know, the whole day. And they put me on this like barbiturate cocktail, but I was like, I'm not taking care of myself. Right. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing mm -hmm. everything for everybody else. And I'm not taking care of myself. And then, you know, you move into that next phase where you're caring for aging parents. And so I had to get really clear on how do I want to live? and what's important to me and how to filter things through, I mean, my core values basically. And so like, if you're, I just, I got to the point where I was like, I can't say yes to everything. And I was saying yes to everything. Yeah. I mean, I mean that what you just described is a situation where there's a lot of non-negotiables you have to balance. I mean, when you're taking care of a sick parent, I've, I've, I've experienced that, you know, and you have a lot of variables. The sick parent comes first, of course. But you have everybody else that wants to yep. <laughs> step in and quote yep. unquote help. Yep. <laughs> so you have this super mom theory. Exactly. So tell us what is the super mom? I think you just described it, but what is the super mom theory? <laughs> You know, it's, um, so my version of the super mom theory, I think is a little bit different than the current mom who's in the throes because my kids are all grown and out of the house now, but to your point, you right. never, you're never not a mom. Right. But, um, really like for, for my generation, which was kind of that early nineties mom, it was, you had to do it all literally all of it. Right. So I was yeah, up yeah. until 2 AM wrapping Christmas presents. I was, you know, hand making gift bags for birthday parties for my kid. I was the president of the PTA and I was also working full time and I was getting dinner on the table and I was picking up the dry cleaning and I was doing all the grocery shopping mm -hmm. and, and, and right. 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 We don't need to do that. Like we're, it's a family unit. And so that super mm -hmm. mom day, like I, I really believe you can have it all, but you cannot do it all. So yeah. incorporating the entire family is super important because it teaches our kids independence and it teaches, mm -hmm. um, it just, it creates a better 
environment, right? I mean, my son, who's now 31, when he first moved out, <laughs> called me because he didn't know how to wash towels. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> it was like, oh, I never let him do those things, right? I never taught him. I did all of the things. Um, yeah. Because that's what so I was he's raising. like going, you how do. do I wash towels, mom? <laughs> Yeah, my and son's like, 23 so and I had the same kind of experience. But the difference between perhaps you and me is I was a single mom with an autoimmune disease. So my son did learn how to cook for himself and clean for himself. So growing up, I never had to wake him up for school from day one. He got up, nice. you know, because I yep. told him, you know, you, you this is this is the way it is. And he understood that I there were some I couldn't walk when when, when I got my divorce because of the pain. So he had to learn to be very self-sufficient. So that's kind of, that's, that's an extreme situation. I mean, that's like survival mode. And what you're describing right. with someone else, with, with your situation is living in survival mode when you're not really in survival mode. You have more control. Exactly. Yep. You have more control over that situation. Whereas I was somebody who didn't have control over my body. So my son had right. to learn those things, but I get what you're saying because even though I taught him, you know, get up, do your homework before all else. Don't, you know, make sure you play. And he followed those rules. He did. But then here we are at the post office, 23 years old, explaining how to do a return receipt. <laughs> sign, you know, sign mail, certified mail situation. And I literally stood there with him and just said, look, here's what you're going to do. You, you need an envelope. You need this, that, and the other, right? So we walk into the post office and he said, what do I, how do I fill this out? I said, you see that man sitting behind that counter? Go ask him. I will not always be with you to answer these questions. These people are here for that. <laughs> I mean, it's so crazy. Some of the things they 100%. don't realize, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that adds to the yeah. super mom theory that you're talking. I'll just take care of everything because that's the only way it's going to exactly. get done. Well, exactly. And so my youngest, right, my youngest was mo far more self-sufficient because I also let go of some of that control. Are the towels mm -hmm. going to be folded the way I want them so they look really pretty in the bathroom? Absolutely not. But they're clean and they're folded. And they're put and that's up. What matters. <laughs> and they're put away. <laughs> yeah. It's out of my hair. Yep. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's, I mean, you know, I, I think that that's the thing is like we as moms, I have a, I have a, I have clients and friends now that are, are in that millennial generation and they're in the throes mm -hmm. of motherhood and they're dealing with very different, but same pressure. Right. So are the toys you're buying non-toxic and all organic oh, and from all America the, all, and, the judgment. Right, all of the judgment. And, and so we used to, I feel like that the, our generation placed judgment on ourselves probably more than, cause I don't think, I, I don't know. I didn't have any time to judge any other mom. I don't know about you. <laughs> But now I, I, I like really, you know, you know I was like, you know media. what, babe, I get it. It's, you know, I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> I mean, it, I had one lady come to me when I was a mom, we're both single moms and I totally get what she was saying, but I was a different type of single mom because I was an entrepreneur as well. So I had this drive where it was like, I want my son and I to be successful here. And I need that security because this autoimmune disease, blah, 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 the whole nine yards. So it's like, pick myself up and get myself out of this situation. Here comes, set, you know, single mom number two. And she's like, well, he just doesn't understand. And I'm like, it's on you to teach him. Yes. And he doesn't understand yeah. because you're not communicating. You can't just expect yeah. him to know what to do. And then my son, it was so funny. My son, his friends, the same kid and his friends came over to help him do something. He comes inside. He goes, oh, my God, they just stand there and watch me. They won't do. And I said, welcome to my world. hundred <laughs> yep. percent. You know, and, and here's what's crazy about that. Or not even crazy. So frustrating to me is, and we don't, I don't think you think about it, right? But like all of us that complain about, you know, my husband doesn't do X, Y, Z. We train our boys not to do X, Y, Z, right? Mm -hmm. So we're creating that generational just over and over of, I mean, I grew up, well, I grew up really fundamentalist Christian. So, and I'm the oldest daughter and all of those things, but like, you know, I still to this day serve my dad's plate first. Like that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I grew you, up the same way. Dad gets the, get dad gets the plate first. Cause he's the one that worked blood, sweat and tears to pay for the family, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> Totally get it. Yeah. And then and, it, and that, and mom, that becomes so a controlling start... feature. Too. <laughs> and your mom, go ahead. Yes. 
Oh, well, no, I was just saying, then you're a mom. So then you also, you serve up your kids' plates, right? And so then all of a sudden you're teaching your kid, you're teaching your boys. This mm-hmm. is the way, like, we're first. And you're teaching mm-hmm. your girls, you serve. And and there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you right, want to do. Right, but like, right. It also creates these generations, right, where it's, it's very imbalanced. And women work now. We work, we have hobbies, we do other yeah. things. And so, you know. It's well, I think it's the carryover of each generation because my parents were front, you know, the greatest generation, World War II. I had older parents. And so they're very Victorian in their mindset, not, and they were coming out of that Victorian mindset, but it was still being carried over in some ways, you know? So I get what you're saying about the woman is to be of service. She's supposed to cater to the man. I mean, that was their mindset. I mean, that was because women weren't allowed to work. So their job was to stay at home and take care. But my dad said at one point in time, he said, I'm chauvinistic and today's standards, I think the woman should stay at home. He said, I think that is the most beneficial way. Children need their mom at home. He said, but this world will not allow that. You have to work. He said, so you need to learn how to also be a business person. So then I get this, well, you've got to have two hats now, which that's that's minimizing it really because the mom has 15,000 hats. (laughs) <laughs> exactly exactly you know. and and that's the thing right like we're expected to still to it's still in 2024 we're expected to not divide and conquer we're expected to pile on and mm-hmm. handle keep and taking like, all the responsibility that's I mean, just not yeah yeah i mean my son we uh, you know just a little note to our listeners we do have a slight delay so if it sounds like we're stepping over each other it's because we don't know we didn't hear the other one (laughs) yet but um (laughs) i think that you know we we keep being like my son said the other day and he was being he was being a pain i'll be honest he was being a pain children do this even when they're adults (laughs) and he was kind of you know trying to manipulate me because they still try to do that it doesn't matter how old they are they're gonna i tried to manipulate my mom at 30. (laughs) <laughs> it's a thing <laughs> so he's sitting there doing that and he replies to me he's like but you're my mom i said just because I'm, I'm, I'm your mom doesn't mean i get to allow you to do me that way you're an adult welcome to adulthood <laughs> you know yeah. i think i think you're right so how do moms break away from this super mom i'll take it all on everything everybody says i need to take on i'm going to take on how do we how do we navigate that and go no where do we put the no you know the boundary so yes so uh, i love this question because this is where it really starts with what's important to you so what are your core values and you know your core values are three to five things that you value and they probably haven't changed that much over the course of your life maybe you've grown into realize some things are more important and others aren't but you really have Three to five. Everybody does. So what are um, some examples of three so, to five core values? What are the most common ones? So most common would be, you know, um, a lot of, a lot, especially I'm going to speak just to women in this category, um, family time, super great right? quality time with your family. Um, typically health is important, not always necessarily your health as a first and foremost, but especially right. your family's health. Community. Mm-hmm. I think. You froze. Yeah. Okay. Did I, I like, you froze yeah. You can hear me. That's okay. <laughs> Technology is fun today, folks. But can, you can hear me now. So you you said um, the ba- the health of the family, right? Yeah, health of the family um, and community are three that are are often really important, right? And so in that, that's where we start saying yes because we don't want to let anybody down so yes Mm -hmm. to baking the cookies for the bake sale yes to doing the phone tree for the church yes to but those are everybody else's plans though right those are like everybody else's plans it sounds like to me somebody else is running exactly and somebody else's and so you're constantly trying to figure out how to navigate other people's priorities (laughs) so how you can learn to say no is first of all, give yourself space. We are, mm-hmm. it's knee jerk reaction to say absolutely. And then figure it out later. Yeah. Cause of the even super if it mom means, thing. Yeah. of the super mom thing, even though if that means you're up until 2 AM baking cookies, right? Yeah. Unnecessary. Um, so one thing you can do is just give yourself space in the conversation of let me check my schedule and I'll get back to you. Yeah. Give yeah, yourself yeah. time to even the just thing, think about it. Do I really want to like, do that? 
I think too. And do you, I have time, you, right? Yeah. Well, it's a, it's first when somebody's asking you and you're in the moment and you, I mean, I think as women, we, I don't want to call it people pleasing, but we do want to please. We want to serve. That's part of our makeup because we're mothers, Yep. <laughs> you know, yeah. as part of it. But we also have to learn that not everybody is your child. And I think that it's just an, right. it's a, it, you know, somebody comes and asks, can I, will you help me? And that knee jerk without really thinking about, well, who else have I committed to today? You know, and I think that I think it's really important for people to navigate that sort of thing. So when they're doing that sort of thing and you, you, you know, and they're trying to decide what needs to be done. I love that you said, take a stop and say, let me think about that for a minute. And what, why don't you think that we, that's not our first go-to? Why do we, why do we just I think involuntarily go, sure, <laughs> almost, you know, it seems no, like. I, I think it's just society, right? We've been, I think that our mothers show this, that example. I think that we see it in movies. I think that we have this perception of wanting to be all things to all people. And there's nothing Again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just you have to, you can't say yes to everything and not say no to something, right? And so, right, if because oh, I think yes, it also ends up with some moms that say yes to everything. You have those certain people that say, sure, I'll do that for you. And then they don't follow through. So then they start getting this reputation of somebody that just says, yeah, I'll do it for you, but they're not really going to do it. They're just saying it to say it. But really, what it is, they have way too yep. much on their plate and they've said yes to too much. You know? Correct. So. Yeah. When so with yes your too much is a problem, right? Yeah. So with your services, when you're looking at someone that comes to you, let's say they're they're overwhelmed. What are some of the what are some of the questions that you're going to ask them to help them um, realize where they can make these like trims in their yeses, you know, and say no more often? What are some of the things that you that you look at? So we start with what are your core values? What are three things that are right. super important to you, right? Just three non-negotiables. Family dinner time is usually a big one. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to take on something, is it going to interfere with your family dinner time, right? Because that's one thing that, that seems to Okay, so you're talking about your, your, your three core values. Mean... Your three core values are your non-negotiables. It's another word for them. Okay. Non-negotiables. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And gotcha. then you run your things through, right? The like, what, what? Is, if you say yes to carpool, does that mean you go through the drive-through, right? Is that mm -hmm. is that a non-negotiable that you want to feed your kids healthy food, and you don't want? To, maybe you're trying to stick to a budget, and you don't want to blow another forty dollars for food that you're going to then feel guilty about because, um, you know, you're now you in don't the have money for Johnny's backpack or something. Yeah. Um, exactly. I think that's yeah. interesting. What you say there is like, you're weighing what's important and you're also asking yourself, is this taking away from another value? Because you can have the value of family, exactly. time, but then you can also have your family kind of going, but we want to, and we want to do this and we want to do that. And you fall into that trap too. Have you seen that before? Or, you know, catering to the family have, way too much because yeah. the and family you know, value thing. That's Yes. Yeah. And I, I always suggest sitting down and having maybe a family meeting, like, I don't know, quarterly, right? Especially for those times, like summer and holidays are two big ones, right? There's tons of mm -hmm. invitations. Everybody has something different that they want to do or somewhere different that they want to be. There's recitals and there's camps and there's all of this stuff. And just sitting down and saying, like, what are important? What's in our budget? Um, and how do we really like navigate this so that everybody is not everybody's going to be hundred percent happy, right? But mm -hmm. we've got a pretty collective, mm -hmm. we're, this is what we're going to do this year. And then putting those things, like, you don't have to do everything, right? We like, we don't have to attend every event. Mm -hmm. We don't have to show up at every wedding. We don't, kids don't have to go to every single summer camp. Um, you know, how, yeah. what does that look like? And I'll, I'll give you an example. So um, my kids were, my youngest was 14, I think. So mm -hmm. um, I had two, my two step kids were in the house my 16 year old and then my my old my two older ones had moved out but my daughter was still coming around a whole right. lot she was 19 at the time so christmas you know we didn't have it's one christmas we didn't have a lot of money so i stacked it with all of these things that i wanted to do you know we're going to have a movie day we're going to bake cookies one day we're going to oh go you're going to you're going to substitute Santa the thing. toy 
substitute exactly, right? they're make, making up for it yeah <laughs> we're gonna make up for the like you know not a lot of and money. overly all, make up for it and i'm just gonna give you all my time and energy and oxygen <laughs> For two whole weeks, right? Like they have Christmas break for two weeks. Two weeks, we're going to do something every single day. Yep. And by like day four, my my son was just like, can we just do nothing today? Like stay in pajamas? Like can we I please not go anywhere? That. And I was like, yes, we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, that's yes, what's we can so do that. funny. That is so funny because my son, he came over for Christmas and I was like, you want to go do this? You want? He's like, no, I'm cool. I'm cool. So I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to ask you anymore. You know, we'll just stay at home yeah. and be boring. Fine. And by the time we were done, he said, this was the best Christmas ever because we didn't rush around and we just sat around and enjoyed each other, played games and had fun. I was like, we can do that all the time. <laughs> you know, anytime <laughs> you come over, you know, I'll, I don't have to cook. I just have to sit here and look at you. Cool. <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's so funny. I think we overthink it. We overdo. It's the motherly thing. And it can also yes. seep into your business when you do this because you start people pleasing your clients. Yes. You know, so yep. I think it's very, I think non-negotiables are incredibly helpful. Non-negotiables are great. And then, you know, the other thing is setting, when you bring up work, setting up really clear boundaries around your work time, right? Because I, I think, and this is even if you work outside the home, you bring work home, you're maybe mm -hmm. texting your boss or you're listening to a phone call or you're responding to an email, right? While you're making dinner, kids need help with homework. Right. So they, they're not getting your full attention. So they're frustrated. You're frustrated mm -hmm. because you're torn <clears throat> between two worlds. Work is frustrated because you're not fully present. And so really setting super clear this is the time that I'm going to do this thing. And I know that that's hard and it's hard, especially if you work for yourself um, and you maybe are a solopreneur, but really having something that is a, a transitionary moment. So I like mm. to say, even if your laptop is at the kitchen table, right? You close mm -hmm. your laptop, you put it away. That signifies I'm done with work for tonight. One tip that I will give anybody, mom or not mom, is write down the three things at the end of the day that you must accomplish yes, tomorrow. Yes, And that way you end your day with a plan, right? And then you you open, you're not being reactive in the morning. So you start your day knowing I have to get these three things done. You sleep better too today, when you're like, I, I know, know what the either. plan is for tomorrow. You sleep so much Absolutely. better. Absolutely. And mean, it reduces it's... your anxiety. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I love that you said, you know, it's, I have like a shutdown routine and a setup routine. I was watching a movie one day where uh, they were talking about this writer's startup. He did the same thing every time he was going to sit down and write. And it was so simple. He didn't make it complex. He just went and got his little lap desk, cleaned it off with a little brush sharpened six pencils lined them all up put down his paper you know i mean i was like he's just like here we go gonna set up my little thing turn on my little light had all of his little you know snacks drink whatever so he didn't have to get up unless he had to go to the bathroom that was it and he's ready to sit down and focus yeah and he would just, and Love then it. they had him like and as soon as he went to sit down and focus and write he just sat there and stared at the page until it came to him <laughs> it didn't force yeah. it, it just here we go <laughs> it'll come <Yep>. you know. <laughs> and i was like what a relaxed yeah. way to approach it <laughs> mm -hmm. and you get your best work especially when you're creative right you get your best work in those moments where oh, inspiration yeah. comes and you can do so much more in such a shorter amount of time um you know and i really love to break the multitasking myth right like we mm -hmm. are always as women, as moms, we always have a lot going on in our head. Oh, we're the queens um, so of really multitasking. I mean, we're the queens. Yep. <laughs> but, but then that's 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 what leads to stress and burnout, right? Because we're exhausted. It's uh -huh. using up so much mental capacity, and we're so tired. Um, so I help I help set up systems and automations in your home so that you can essentially have you know the personal assistant and the like kind of the chef. You know what's going to be for dinner and you have a meal so plan what's, and you what's have an a automation. Fridge. What's an automation? So I I hear you talking about, you know, you're planning your meals, you're making the plan for the week, you know, you're, you're playing, make it a plan so you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to answer the question, what do I do today? So what's one of the automations yep. that you talk about? Because, you know, I tuned in on automation. <laughs> 
I love automation. Yeah, automations <laughs> are great. Um, so they're because they make our life so simple, right? Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. subscribe and save is a great one. And whether you believe oh, in really? you know, okay. purchasing off of Amazon or not, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, never run off toilet paper again, right? Or a cleaning product. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Those bulk so, items that you forget about at the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. the next thing you know, you're running back to the grocery store. And here's the crazy thing. So, so part of the automation is simplifying your life, right? If the pandemic did anything for us, so many things come to your door now, right? That that maybe didn't come to yeah, your door yeah. 10 years ago, but now they do. And door so dash. it's a fantastic way to implement <laughs> that and just have it show up. DoorDash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. DoorDash is another one. Um, you know, you come back late money. from I mean, a football game the average and there you go. trip to Target. <laughs> The average trip to Target. Yep. And this is where, you know, we make, well, the average trip to Target costs $45 for the, I forgot one item, right? You run in for one thing and you grabbed 10 of those things in that little impulse section and you got an extra $45. And I know moms that you're going to Target three or four times a week for one item. And I'm like, oh God. you're and killing leave with your, 20. you're killing your, like, you can, then leave with 20 and you could go on a vacation. <laughs> like, it's literally yeah. like. An average of eleven hundred dollars a month, right? It's so much money. <laughs> it's like stop doing um, that. <laughs> well, do stop, you think that moms that. Yeah, do same. that? You know, you get into that that convenience. I've done the same thing and grab some candy for the baby. You know, you're getting presents for the kids to make them happy half the time when you're grabbing those things. So there's that mindset again. I'm I'm making everybody happy. I thought of you still you know not even standing there looking at it going what do i want i mean that's at least what i did when i was in the convenience aisle yeah. <laughs> what does matthew want what does my son want yeah. yeah 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 you know and i i think there are you know i also i have moms that love target right that's their that's their zen mm-hmm. place they like to go in get a cup of starbucks not take the kids with them make it an adventure spend a few hours <laughs> Make it an adventure, you know, sit down in a chair, target read a magazine. I don't know. And that's totally it's an escape. That's your jam. Yeah. It's an escape. We just trying out this new room. It is an escape, yeah. And if you're using it that way, that's great. But also, is that really how you want like is that really an escape for you? And no, if it's it is, not. fantastic. But it's probably not, right? Exactly. No. Could you take that time and maybe go? It's actually what you're doing is you're camouflaging your escape with actually helping other people. (laughs) Yep. And again, shopping retail therapy, right? And which I'm, I'm all for if you want to, you know, retail therapy is is fine if that's what you want to do it for. But if you're doing it to compensate for something else, then you know, again, do you have the money for that? Is that think about what you're doing? Yeah. I mean, really, when you get into the Think about what you're doing and think about like, again, just the the choices, right? You have choices, but it's your choice. Not I want to say blowing your budget, but kind of, right? Like, could you take that money? Yeah, and no, it, you don't really think go on about a vacation. It. Yeah, right, right. It's you like, don't think about it. What and are you really just, using this money so for? Crazy. Like, yeah. It adds up so fast. Oh, I know the Target situation is such a substitute for people pleasing. I mean, it really is when you're doing that. You know, why are you going to Target for your escape moment when you could go to get a massage or you can, we feel so guilty when we want to do that. So if you want to, you know, overcome the super mom and find more time for you so that you can be that well-dressed, healthy, you know, mom that all the other moms absolutely envy, step. Steph, tell them how they can get in touch with you. <laughs> yes, I love it. So um, Facebook, I have a Facebook group that is the mother of all mom groups. And I named it that because I cannot stand mom groups. I think that there's a whole lot of shitting wow. that goes on in them and a lot of judgment. So this is super Ooh. high vibe. Absolutely just support. And that is it. Um, I have a mom support group every other Tuesday night. You can find me on Eventbrite under Steph, the boundaries, babe. Um, I list all of my events there. I do free workshops and then Instagram is also great. It's I'm at Steph underscore the boundaries, babe. Awesome. You pretty much look at the boundaries, babe, anywhere and you're going to find me. (laughs) I'm everywhere. (laughs) She's also in the show notes. (laughs) 
take a look at the show notes <laughs> anyway, if you'd like notes. to hook up with Steph, the boundaries, babe. <laughs> I love what you had to say about the three goals for the following day. I do the same exact thing and adapt my day accordingly. You know, if I didn't get to something, I give myself grace and say, okay, well, how can we pick back up tomorrow? What do we need to do to reduce the overwhelm? And what do we need to do to make sure that we have the energy to go throughout the day and set those non-negotiables? You know, I mean, it's, it's not, you know, next time I see Steph in the car line, I'm going to tell her no. You know, I mean, you gotta, you gotta commit to the no, the no is so freeing. So check out Steph's, (laughs) check out Steph's info in the show notes and Steph, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you have any, if you'd like to have Steph on the show again, let me know, send me some questions you'd like for me to ask her. She'd love to stop on by again. I'm sure. Thank you, Steph. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Be sure to join the Effortlessly Book community on Facebook for more free resources and support. Simply check out the show notes. Please share this podcast with other online service providers in your circle. And by all means, leave a comment and let me know your biggest takeaway along with other topics you would like me to cover so you can continue to make business effortless.